going to be soon. Okay, boom. Uh, right now, your stream is, let's say, in the system. I'm just showing only the cameras. And we can yeah. leave it like this. The only thing is when I switch into presentation mode, I don't get to see myself. But I guess I don't get to see myself at all if I'm not in this window, right? Um, that's fine. I, I, it's something I'm either. Gonna... It's something I'll just keep in consideration. I will try not to sway back and forth too much. That's my that's my little thing. OK, cool. We're good. OK, we're good. I'm going to start streaming right about now. Ah, wait a second. We were streaming a few seconds uh, for a few seconds already. But that's good. That's good. OK, hello, everyone. Today we have uh, Ryan Carniato, the creator of the SolidJS framework, which we are going to discuss today. Hey, Ryan. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing super fine. I would be doing much better if it wouldn't be so hot here in Stockholm. Uh, where do you live? How, 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 what is the temperatures <laughs> where you live? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty hot here. I'm, uh, I, I'm living in San Jose, uh, California. I moved there from Canada. And uh, yeah, we, we've been in, uh, it's hard because I, I still think in Canadian metrics. So I'm like, we've been mid 30s, but you know, uh, what is that in? It's like, 85, 90 um, Fahrenheit. All right. For me, Canadian me measuring system or like European or whatever is like easier to understand. 30 is pretty harsh already. Yeah. Everything above 30 is crazy, crazy yeah. hot. Yeah. I have, have, hello, everyone who's in the comments right now. Uh, let us know what is the temperature where you live. How do you uh, sustain yourself <laughs> during this hot uh, weather times? How do you survive? And we're going to discuss uh solid because there was a major release of this framework right that's the reason why we gathered here yeah 1.0 uh it's been a long time coming uh but we have finally uh you know put the seal on the apis and uh looking forward to get ready to using it in uh, production apps that's that's fantastic news so as far as i know you've prepared a bunch of topics i, I so the thing about this stream is i believe uh that it will be of the biggest value to people who already work with React. Because what, in my opinion, makes Solid special, and Ryan, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's is because it's it has familiar mental models for React developers. Sometimes it's even easier to grasp, because React has a lot of things that you just need to know how it works. It's not that it's logical. It's just this is the way it's done. Uh, in Solid, it's even a little bit more intuitive in some ways, right? Yeah, I mean that's my goal. That's my hope. Uh, I'm I'm gonna show you guys what that means in a few minutes here. Sh shall I get started? Yeah, I think I think you can get started. Uh, if you're re whenever you're ready, just let me know. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's let's get started. All right. Awesome. Let's go. Okay. So yeah, we'll right out the start. What is Solid and why you should use it? Well, it's a UI framework built. Um, from its own reactive primitives. At its core, Solid is a reactive library, and we just happen to make the renderer from the same library. And uh, uh, what that ends up meaning is, like uh, Maximo was just saying, React-like API, but an intuitive um, execution model. Um, and I'd like to quickly show you an example of what I mean by that. Um, let's see here. I'm going to load up the Solid Playground here. And um, you, you might have seen an example uh, like this before. Uh, you know, with a counter. But what I wanted to do was kind of show you the kind of de facto automatic counting example, right? Um, and basically, you know, we're going to set count here to count plus one. Already you're noticing a slight difference um, from, from React because uh, our signal, which is our pri primary... Uh, which I call it our primary uh, um, primitive, our, 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 our kind of like our hook is accessed via a function call um, instead of just being the plain value. But this uh, allows for a, a few nice things, right? Um, as you can see, I have just put a top level set interval here and have it update every second. Um, and the reason we can do this in solid is because components only render once. But you know, you still might want to clean this up. So um, there, there's an on cleanup function here, which lets us do this. But I think this is the first kind of 
obvious um, difference for people coming from React is that um, basically um, with a clear interval t. Basically, that's really that's really interesting because in React, as component renders on every state or props update, uh, you have to put all your side effects like this set counter. You have to put them into use effect. Here, you don't have to bother, right? As you said, it, it's run once. Yeah, I'm just seeing. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, sometimes the playground it's a little bit new, a little bit buggy. It sometimes doesn't propagate the updates in real time while I'm doing it. But essentially, you can see it. The counter is working. We we didn't need to make an effect because the component itself is an effect, and that's sort of the mental model difference with uh, with 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 solid, right? With React, you've been accustomed to this, you know, view equals function of state. That's still relatively true, but in, in React, it's a, it's actually a little bit uh, trickier than that because it's more like VDOM equals function of state, and then Ryan, could you make could you please make uh, the font a little bit larger, like sure. press. Command plus a couple of times. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So, awesome. right, VDOM is a function state where in, you know, and then you basically, in the background, React has a patch function or reconciler, let's call it reconcile, and it takes in the DOM and it takes in this VDOM. So there's two main phases when you when you build your React app in that, you know, it's uh, it basically has a pure rendering state and then it has a side effect time. I'm going to get more into that in a minute, but I just wanted to kind of just as of introduction, like here is solid, um, you know, it's React like. You see hook like syntax, but right away we notice that there aren't, you know, the same hook rules. Um, and yeah, to illustrate this, uh, um, I'm going to kind of show this. Right, um, is that um, the compiled output is actually one of the nicest things we have here in this playground, and it and it really kind of illustrates. Um, the power here, and actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a quick little little change here. Let's actually go count. I'm just gonna, gonna go this just so it's a little bit clearer what's going on. Right, I'm just, whatever. Um, I'm going. Technically speaking, if I was to show you this output um, here, and now I'll do it right here, you'll you'll see that the code looks almost identical to the code you wrote. That's because um, our 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 uh, reactive is runtime based, um, unlike Svelte. It, we, we only really need to transform the JSX. And you can kind of already, you can just see it almost a, a one for one thing. We, we make a template here, which is just an HTML template of your element. And then we, when we render your function, we just clone those DOM nodes. And then we insert this content and return. But I wanted to kind of really quickly show here just how. Um, it's going to use text content. It's 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 a property on DOM elements uh, that you can set. And the reason I want to do this is I want to just show how simple this is, especially if you're kind of coming from React mindset, right? Because I, I was able to kind of simplify this example quite a bit here. Because essentially now in this case we know that it's text. Um, when it's an insert, it could be you know it's JSX. It could be anything. It could be a component. It could be it could be other you know strings, it could be any value, it could be anything you can pass into JSX. But I'm just restricting it down to text content just to really illustrate for you um, what's going on here. Because basically, again, we clone our template. So we, we create our template at the beginning. Then we clone it. And in this case, because it's text content, it knows that there should be um, a text node. So it actually clones the text node and just walks to that first child. And then inside here, this is an internal function, but it's just create effect. You can think of it or use effect in React. It just calls use effect on that text node, sets the data to count. Basically, no matter what's going, what else is going on in our component here, the only thing that really needs to rerun is setting that text inside that button. Just, just simply that one text node gets updated. The rest, you can kind of already see this. The, the only uh, the only functions getting imported from the library here that aren't being imported by you are the, this template, the create component, and the effect. And the, the effect, as I said, is just um, like our standard create effect or use effect and react. Create component is is there for a reason for, for reactive purposes, but it's basically uh, an identity function. And by that, I mean, it literally just calls counter with the props. So you can almost pretend it's not there. It's just, it's just a function call. Um, 
and the template just makes it into, uh, turns a string into DOM nodes. So like you are in this example, literally looking at the whole, um, like pretty much almost everything um, minus the reactive system. Um, th th there isn't really much of a library. It's like you're seeing all, all the work is happening right here in front of you. It's just an effect that sets some text content. Um, and that's kind of one of the key powers of this approach. Um, both from the perspective of uh, being very performant, as you can tell, it would just be a single pinpoint update, um, but also from just uh, code simplicity and, and size, right? Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, looks like my slides didn't update, but basically I, I wanted to show you guys a, a quick demo of this to, in terms of size to show you what I meant. Um, recently, um, we, we created a Hacker News a demo um, using a beat um, with Solid's new starter and uh, and um, Cloudflare um, deployed. And one of the cool things here you can kind of see is that, uh, where am I looking for? Sorry, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the right tab. I want, no, I want, there's no, there's, there's no, there's no XHR fetches here because it was server rendered. Um, but what I wanted to show here and uh, actually, it looks like I have some Chrome extensions. I'm gonna switch to this other window here. What I wanted to show here was um, that, uh, of course, Hacker News yeah, is is that um, you know the Solid's main bundle here is about for Hacker News examples about 12.2 uh, kilobytes, and um, the page for stores is 1.6 kilobytes. Um, Gzipped or uh, I th actually think it's brought lead and, and served out over Cloudflare. And then if we load like another page, um, like this page, um, it's about another one six per kilobytes. So in total on these two pages, we've loaded 15.4 kilobytes, right? And just for comparison, so you can kind of understand um, another small framework like Svelte, um, it's, it's very, comp um, which generally is the smallest framework when it comes to uh, um, mo most things here, uh, it, like simple demos. It starts smaller at 10.3 kilobytes, but its first component is three kilobytes. When we go to load the other page, um, and that's pretty cool, Svelte has preloading there. Um, it's you know 3.2. My 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 point is, um, solids um, both is small and scales really well, right? Um, as you can see, I mean, this is still really good. It's 16.5 kilobytes for the for the for the main pages on the Hacker News example. But basically, once you get past something of this demo size, you know, um, solid size scaling really kind of comes comes into the into picture in terms of um, uh, bundle size savings. Um, you know, it will it will not be the smallest at making a to do MVC or a simple benchmark. But um, it, basically, anything larger than a Hacker News demo, um, solid is one of the smallest frameworks out there. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of some of the you know high level benefits of solid. Yeah, that's I think it looks fantastic. It's a small footprint, like really small bundle size. It's fast, it's performant, and it has familiar API. Whoa. Yeah. That, that's really impressive. So yeah. let's <laughs> let let's dig in into like how to transition my React knowledge that I already have and I <laughs> clinch to it a little bit like okay, I, I just, it's familiar. I like to operate in familiar uh, realm. How can I transition to solid? Exactly. Yeah. So um, how to learn solid as a React developer? Well, let's see here. Like, I'm, I'm going to point this out right away. The similarity here is intentional. Um, we actually kind of had to go a little bit out of our way. As you can tell, solid at its core is a reactive library. But I really I really liked a lot of the things React does. And that was why I chose um, you know, to go this way with the, with the API. Um, Solid has its roots actually in older frameworks like uh, Knockout JS from the early 2010s time period, but those frameworks, um, you know, basically ceased to exist after React came out, and I think for really good reason, honestly. Um, and I, over time, begrudgingly uh, gained more and more respect for React, and I knew that if I was going to come up with a solution that used reactivity. Um, you know, in a similar way to Knockout, we had to learn a few lessons. Otherwise, you know, we were doomed to repeat the same mistakes again. So things like unidirectional flow, read-write segregation, immutable interfaces is really kind of core and it should be familiar to you as a React developer. Um, so that's where the familiarity comes in, right? But components run only once. And I mean, I can't, 
you know, emphasize this enough, but I, I, like you, you, you've been watching this demo where, you know, the count keeps on incrementing. I, I'm just, I'm just going to like really just spell it out for you, for everyone here. Right. Like this, you know, this, this console log um, is, let me, sorry, I have my, where is it? Just had this, yeah. This console log, um, it only, I don't know why there's a, oh, right, because I was typing, but this console log only appears once, right? Like, like this, this component's updating, this console logs once. This is, this is still true when you, you know, when you come up with a nested component, like, um, I don't know, let's pretend we wanted to have like a, Let's make a nested, right? And give it some props and whatever. Okay. Like, let's pretend now that we're we're putting this in a, in a div, right? Something, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put path props dot count through, and instead of our button now, you know, we're going to just go uh, what uh, nested. Oh, actually, yeah, I, I did it this way. I could have done children, but whatever. Let's let's just call count equals count, right? And um, I should actually clear the console here because it, it kept on refreshing. But let's say, you know, this this outer component once this inner component. You know, um, so let's clear this again. Uh, what, what whatever it, it basically um, we we have kind of perfect granular updates here um, in that the components themselves don't update just the just the closures over the bindings like I showed previously with that um, text ca uh, text content binding so we we basically have an incredible power in that each prop independent in independently updates um, all the way through the whole tree. And it doesn't really end up getting subscribed until you get to that final point, right? Uh, showing the compiled output again. We're, we're, what we're actually doing here is we're just wrapping, I told you that the create component basically does nothing. It's the compiler. The compiler just wrapped that count in a getter. This is a getter object. So you, this, you can pretend this is your prop object. Everything that's happening in solid is transparently on the surface in front of you. So you basically, you, you, you're seeing this lazy evaluation here, right? So th this count, it just goes, oh, I know this could be reactive, so I'm gonna wrap it in a getter. So when you ex execute props.count over here, um, it's it's only getting executed inside this insert, which as I mentioned, this is just an effect essentially that does inserting. Um, you, you're passing it all the way through your tree and it's only actually doing any work at the the leaf node, at the where where the DOM is being inserted, so um, you you get this kind of almost like streams running all the way through your app, um, and the main you know um, component construction only actually happens on initial render. Um, let's see if I can kind of yeah. So um, yeah, components run once. Dynamic dependencies, yeah. I, I'm gonna bring this one up too, because this is another kind of difference for you coming from React. You might be, you, I, I've been using uh, the rendering, which is kind of obvious, need the diff, but you might be thinking, well, these effect functions haven't needed to show their, show their, um, uh, I'm gonna, I'll keep that there for now, but they, 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 they haven't needed to show their um, Dependency arrays. Why is that? Well, dependency yeah. arrays. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Because solid, solid has its own. Um, so let's just go console log. The count is you know count, and I need to import create effect. Basically, solid has its. We're going to be getting some stuff in the console here. Let's just. Yeah. The. It has its own runtime reactive uh, tracking system, right? Which is similar to MobX or Vue, and that's just kind of built in. That's what everything's built off of here. So, um, essentially, you don't need um, you don't need to put the dependencies. We know because you execute count as a function for this effect that it's a dependency. We know that it's a signal, something that we can listen to, and it just automatically tracks. And the reason this is powerful 
um, wasn't really obvious to me at first because sure, I mean, we save writing that array, but what, 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 the reason it's powerful is that it happens at runtime um, instead of um, at compile time, like um, some compiled reactive frameworks or even the ESLint rules that you're kind of used to in React. Um, and what, what this means is that, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna set up a slightly, um, slightly more advanced example here. Um, and it's going to just show. We're gonna we're gonna show we're gonna pretend we have like a name card, okay? And you know, excuse my simple HTML that I'm gonna use for this. We're going to have a full name here that I'm gonna do here. The reason we're we're gonna do this is I'm going to I'm going to basically make a couple signals. We're gonna have first name, last name, right? And let's just start this at on or something, okay. And I'm really uncreative. I always use like John Smith as like all my examples. Um, me, oh, sorry. It's, it's, I'm here. Getting ahead of myself, right? Um, and actually, uh, I'm going to change this actually. Sorry to display name and. What I'm going to show off here is that um, I'm going to use create memo, which is similar to use memo in, in React. And this might be like a little overkill for a simple example like this, but I, I just I, I think it really kind of highlights what I, what I want to show here, which is that we can we can basically make our dependencies conditional, like. Actually, I'm going to add one more signal here. Um, let's pretend we had a toggle between, you know, maybe it's for some kind of responsive thing or whatnot, between showing um, um, uh, between basically showing the full name and only showing the last name. And um, you know, you might have something like if um not show full return first name otherwise um, we'll return first name last name right so yeah we see our john smith here and we probably need to have some way to change that, uh, change that last name, um, so to speak. And I'm just gonna refresh the playground here. It looks like it's it's getting locked up in some previous update. Um, but basically, let's add a click handler here, and on click, let's um, let's basically um, set last name. To um, n plus. Sorry, I'm just going to use the functional form. We have that somewhat to react. So hopefully, when I click this, yeah, okay, so that's great. So, um, and we probably also need a button here to. So I'm going to return a fragment. And we need a button to toggle show full flat just for our case. So let's just add that. Toggle, whatever. And, and we'll just kind of go uh, like similarly um, set show full equals not. Um, actually, yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's, let's go toggle, not toggle, whatever. Okay. See a semicolon. Sorry, it's error messages are. Oh, thank you, TypeScript. Um, where is my code error? Do, 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 do. Fine. Let's just forget about that for a second and just do not show. For those who just for those who've just joined, uh, a quick reminder that we are 
right now learning how to transition from React to Solid. What are the similarities, intentional uh, ones, and what are the differences? And right now we're learning about the dynamic dependencies and why don't you have to define this dependency array for everything, every hook that you use inside of your Solid components? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically. The reason this is really powerful, and now that I've kind of got the setup here, is that, I mean, it, it, it might be kind of obvious when you think about it, but I just want to really point this out because we're going to we're gonna cal calculate, I'm going to put a calculate display name here, right? Just so people can see when we enter this function, right? And so let's clear, let's show our console. Okay, so now we've got our setup. We, we have a button that toggles between full name and last name, um, and we have an update. So whenever, when it, right now, if I click on this, what you're gonna see is we're calculating display name again because we're adding those exclamation marks on the end. Now, if I toggle this off so that we don't show the last name, we're still, we need to calculate the display name. But now we're only showing the first name. We are no longer listening to the last name. So what? Of course, when I say that, it's not actually doing what it's supposed to do, right? Great demo. Um, that's awesome. It's fine. Uh, it, yeah, I have must have muddled something up here. Um, let me try refreshing and doing it one more time. But yeah, see now it works. It's thank you. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> it's it's the playground. Uh, still registering dependencies from the previous edits. So. Try this again. We update the name. But this uh, playground is written in Solid itself. Yeah, right. Yeah, like this, 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 this mechanism works, right? If we toggle off the name and we click, you will see that we're not, we're, we are no longer um, listening, so we're not writing out to the console anymore. Even though I clicked a lot of times, so when it comes back, you're going to see a whole bunch of exclamation marks, but it'll only start logging again when it's there, not logging again. Right. So what I wanted to basically show is that at um, at runtime we can dynamically change um, the array, so to speak. Right. In 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 React it's fixed, but in Solid, depending on what's currently being executed, um, we we know um, basically what has to cause updates. So it's not just granular, but it's smart. Um, is mm -hmm. the best way to put it. Um, is that is that exact is that clear uh, for you? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, hey, people in the in the comments section, like if if uh, if you got questions, I think it's a good point to ask, right, Ryan? Yeah, it's a pretty good point. I, I have a couple more React things, but I think this this is a good point. We've covered a lot of stuff so so far. Yeah. So if we sum it up uh, so far, that we have components that run once, we have dynamic dependency arrays, and what what am I missing? What else? Yeah, uh, components run once. Uh, yeah, I mean those are the key things for 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 here, right? Components run run dy dynamic dependencies, um, and this has a side effect which I haven't got into, but you noticed in my examples before is, is that it, we we saw this when we were looking at our nested component where we made the getter. Um, it's that props and everything evaluate lazily. Um, this is part of that run once thing. We don't actually evaluate the data until you get into the leaf nodes till you, where you get, we're actually using it. Um, and for that reason, um, uh, things that uh, we have to be very conscious of when we access our values, right? There, there is, obviously there's these function calls. It's pretty easy to tell, like if, if I went and I, um, did something like this, let's say, and put it outside and went const L name equals this, mm. and then use it here. Yeah. That would be it. It wouldn't. It would stop updating because it would calculate only once. Mm. Yeah. There is a question from the from the audience. Is there uh, like Redux style hook just like in React, like reuse reducer, something similar in Solid? Um, I haven't built one in uh, like natively. You, mo the thing is, um, it wouldn't be hard to. It just wasn't. It wasn't the uh, how should I put it? it? It's not the most in React. The use reducer is like the most primitive uh, hook, and they build everything from it. Um, because Solid's like more based on mutation in internally, uh, use reducer isn't the appropriate um, 
default, but making a, a reducer in solid is fairly trivial. Um, and, and the reason for that is because almost all our, our, uh, our uh, primitives, um, base primitives, um, actually support reduce of, uh, reducing functions. So I, I already showed you here that the setter um, can, can work right from the previous value. And um, let me, that's fine. I'm just showing both ways you can set. But even this memo, this is the previous value here. So I, I mean, we, we, it's very easy for us on a change to, I mean, I mean, this is, this is probably going to be kind of silly, but let's let's just do it anyway it's you know to 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 do something like like mm -hmm. uh, yeah okay i'm just causing i'm just causing i'm just causing chaos here um but, <laughs> you, but you, you, you get what i'm saying right yeah that you can mimic the reducer behavior is just not needed and the mental model that is used here is more like uh, as, as i understand the idea here is that you should treat your data management as like a tree just another tree like we have a tree of components yeah. and we also have a tree of observable things depending on each other for example and yeah, they will yeah. be uh, and they will be abstracted in the custom hooks that you build basically exactly and right? when we get to the last section today, I'm, I'm actually going to show uh, some Redux, so um, and that kind of mentality. So we we will get there a bit later. Mm, that's nice. I really like that components run once because just a week ago we were discussing this weird behavior of uh, use ref in React. Yeah. If you update the ref value, the uh, current ref dot current. Uh, inside of the body of the component you 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 perform a side effect basically and you do it in the body of the component yeah. and your ref value is just an in, an integer just a number and you say current plus plus you add one you um, increment it by one it won't increment just by one when you render the component it will silently add plus uh, one or two uh, add additional numbers to it invisibly just because it's doing some funky shit behind the uh, curtains and I, I mean, this is this is one of those things that you got to be aware of here. And 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 I'm just I'm just gonna throw this example, right? This still works, obviously, like it doesn't react. But I, I, you know, what do you think this B is like? So this is kind of fundamental here, and why? It, and it'll influence you know a few of our decisions. But like, what what is this B that we're looking at here? Because um, in React. You would never probably do this because it's it's essentially just some VDOM node doesn't make any sense to you. But in Solid, but in React it would be it would be a JSX code. It would be a function call to React Create Element. You would store like well, literally then, a fun function call. This would compile to a function call to create element. But then what you're actually returning, no one does this, right? You never go like assign yeah. JSX, but mm -hmm. unless you're trying to insert it somewhere else. But this would this would be a, a VDOM node essentially. Like this compiles to a create call. The create call runs when this button here, and then it returns a VDOM. In Solid, mm -hmm. this is a DOM element. You are looking at actual button. I know it's a little small, but this is the H like the DOM. HTML button element here being returned um, directly, and um, this is this is kind of why we run once, but it's also kind of really powerful because it just it's it's, it's a very low level abstraction, right? You, you're you're we still use stuff like refs because it keeps our code structured. But yeah, exactly. You get them for free basically with this right. thing as well. Right. You don't have to worry about using refs to track mutable values and stuff like that. Like you were saying, the really complicated example. Like I, I used that use interval at the beginning because if you've ever read the uh, Dan Abramoff has a, an amazing article on kind of getting your mindset around um, hooks, and it's not just hooks. It's actually I, I'd say any kind of declarative data uh, pattern, um, and in a sense, the same kind of mentality is present in Solid. Like when you start defining your data in a way. Um, where you're kind of describing its behavior and kind of modu like um, modularizing it together into reusable pieces. It's a lot of the same stuff applies, but because of React's execution model, you have to be aware that the stuff on the outside always reruns. And by the end of that example, um, you know our simple uh, you know use interval or whatever, like I showed in our first example, becomes quite a mess of refs and use callbacks to to basically do something that like intuitively you as a developer. Would have just like why can't I just write, you know, uh, set interval? 
right? And that's 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 what Solid kind of brings. It's kind of return to like uh, you know the simple uh, model simply because it's just that much closer to the metal. Um, and there is a question about the B. So that's going to be just a DOM actual DOM element that's going to be rendered. That's going to be just a reference to it. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. And yeah, I mean, and you know, if if we had a fragment here, you know, uh, I think Solid might do something smart here, but let's put two buttons just to make sure it's a fragment. Solid might like go, oh, it's, it's only one thing in the fragment, get rid of it. But I made two buttons here. Um, you know, what 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 do we got? Uh, it's an array. An Could array. You zoom in a little bit. Uh, of yeah. two dom dom nodes. Wow, yeah, exactly. that's awesome. Right. Uh, yeah. Let's see if I can. Just... This is so much more direct. I, I I love it. I love it. There is no this level of indirectness that is like we we are used to it to this virtual dom and that here you we would get something like JSON like describing the the the, the structure of yeah. the of the nodes. Instead, we get direct reference to the things that are in the browser. Ex exactly. Cool. But as I said, this comes with a little bit of um, consideration, which I'm going to talk about in our next section. If there isn't any any other questions right now. Should we continue, or any more questions? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think we can continue. Uh, I'm, I'm checking the comments, and there is just amazement <laughs> from this uh, more straightforward way of working with um, elements. That's super cool. But I don't see any questions per se. Maybe I'm not not, not seeing them. Yeah, folks. If you see that I've missed any questions, just please let me know, and we can get back to them a bit later. I think Ryan, we can continue now. Yeah. So why use components for control flow? This one's a, a little bit controversial. Um, but what is it? Can you please explain what is using components for control flow? What does it mean? Uh, Solid has like a four component instead of using map. And I, I'm, I'm, it might be just easier to show you, right? Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you in steps because I think this is, is, is going to be valuable, valuable. So I'm going to, I'm just, it's, it's related to what I just showed you in terms of stuff just being a, a DOM element. Let's, let's just go back to square one here um, with our examples and let's, Let's actually, you know, I'm going to open a new playground window just so that we're back at square one. Okay, so now our count is going to be a list, and we're going to set the list. And I'm just going to go apples, oranges, uh, whatever. I probably did that in the wrong order. I think there's like a, but and. Uh, let's not worry about incrementing it just yet. But um, actually, whatever. We'll worry about the button later too. So, um, because Solid only does the transformation inside. Actually, I'm not going to worry about explaining that yet. Let's just let's just return a div for now and. Let's just do what we know how to do, which is list map. Um, let's just take the item and this show. Or, eh, let's just give item. Let's let's do this. Apples, bananas, oranges, whatever, or apples, oranges, bananas. Um, you, you you know you you've 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 seen this before, right? And the the thing is, there we go. It works in solid, as does um, you know, doing stuff like ternary operators, right? If um, if we changed our list so that let's say I'll click, end up with a button anyways, um, more or less, um, and we went. Said, let's go set list. This, you know, and then let's start. I wonder if TypeScript will complain at me. Probably. Let's go list and yes, thank you, TypeScript. Don't feel like dealing with that right now. Uh, he has no check, I think. Uh, uh, uh. Do, 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 do. What am I not doing here? Do, do. It's always the fun part when you realize that you're missing something fun. Oh, no, of, 
I'm just being dumb. Of, of course, I'm not seeing anything because I, <laughs> I made it nothing, which means I have nothing to click, which means this is a really bad setup for this example. Let's make a button that we can actually, uh, we can actually see. <laughs> um, silly me. Um, so let's get our fragment in place. And let's make a button. And let's click. And this is probably just because this is not on the same line as this, and that's pretty printed. Okay. My, my, my point is, you know, you, you've seen this kind of control flow in React, right? Um, and technically, this this works in, in, in solid. But you, you remember something from what I just showed you. These divs we're returning are divs. They are actual div DOM elements. So you might be able to guess that there's a, a, a slight problem here because essentially, and I'm going to go back to our original example here. Um, it's essentially, if we wanted to take this list and say, append something new on the end, like, I don't know, tangerines, um, essentially, this works too, tangerines, tangerines, tangerines. But what a map function goes over the whole list and returns the new mapped version of the list. Um, this is not good, and I, I can I can I can I can show you why um, in a second here. Because let's look, I mean let's see. Can I can I inspect this specific little thing? Okay, sure. It's perfect. Let's refresh again, and I'm going to show you why. Because when I click this button, see how everything redrew? Um, this is not great. This is actually really, really quite terrible. When people approach reactively, naively, and fine grain, and try and like build their own renderers and stuff, they, they almost immediately hit this. This is why you know there's diffing in the VDOM. You know, every framework diffs lists. Even Svelte, there is runtime diffing. So just using map is fine if you never add items, never sort, never do anything. But with a reactive library, you know, you do actually need to kind of do a little bit of memoization or diffing. So um, for that reason, um, Solid has map array, all right? And sure, we can go, you know, it, it might work like you would expect. See, the thing is, for ternary operators and conditionals, um, which, um, uh, is that everything? Yeah, for turning our operators and conditionals, I can look at the language. I can look at the and symbol. I can look at the, the, you know, the question mark and I can do really smart stuff like hoist the conditions and do a bunch of memoization for you automatically. You, you don't need anything special there, but for a map, who knows where that's coming from, right? Like someone might, you know, it might not be this dot map. It might be some custom map. It might be some, some kind of, thing that we can't analyze it purely from the syntax. So solid provides a helper function. And as you will see, um, if, all right, let's clear the console here. Um, and then we inspect this. Now when we click and add, it's only the new item at the end getting added, right? Beautiful, mm -hmm. this is what we expect. The thing was, you know, this this is kind of our progression, right? We have we have to do a special helper here. And I was looking at this code, and I was like, oh, what like what if the list is empty? Maybe we should add you know some more options like a fallback. What if this is an expression? What if you want to filter it? Then you got to be like turn this into a function, and then because you got to access it as a function, then maybe call filter on it. This this I mean you you can you can do all of this um, with the helper, and it works, but I was just like, why aren't we just using components for this? Components are composable. Components are, you know, components basically. And one of the nice things about components is that instead of jumping straight into the curly braces, you, you kind of get this structural thing going on, especially obvious when you when you use components for conditionals. 
Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. Just a second. Let's 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 not throw away everything here. It's funny when we're zoomed in, that error is just so <laughs> large. Uh, let's just grab this. Um, sorry. Um, let's put it in our for loop. And let's do this. And let's go for each list. And pretty pretty. Um, do, 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 do. What am I doing? Let's refresh. I keep on thinking that I'm missing something just so obvious, but this is always fun. I probably am. This is what happens when you turn TypeScript off. <laughs> um, basically, we have a for component here, and uh, essentially it works similar to what we were doing before with our, with our map. Um, Maybe restart the sandbox um, again. Yeah, this is just funny. I almost want to make that mistake, but that's, that's, that's hilarious. Um, there, oh, sorry. Yeah, so essentially, uh, yeah, there we go. So this for loop is is essentially going to do what we were doing before, right? Just adding the last element. But what the end result here is, um, and it might not be obvious right away, is it, it, it actually ends up tightening up your code a lot, I find. And it's also fairly explicit. And the thing is, what, what I love about this is you've already seen um, kind of precedence for, um, for, you know, for, for components here, right? I like that they're basically, they're authorable. Um, and they're composable, right? You can wrap, you can wrap your own, obviously you can wrap functions, but you can also wrap components and components. But also when you, when you think of things like suspense, right? Like what if you wanted, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's already patterns for this kind of stuff. Like, you know, like, like w why not, right? Like it, I'm just gonna get rid of this for a second, you know? Um, like wh why why can't we just do this right? Um, it, it actually makes it less verbose than using the helper functions, and in so you know when you look at things like error boundaries, um, you know as I said suspense context. There's a, there's a whole context part. There's a whole bunch of components that we're using um, for control flow and data injection um, already in React. You know what what if you have a paginated list? You know, the second you try and build layouts or do anything that's above, you know, first order, you're going to probably be wrapping it in a component. So why not just provide a few ones with with solid out of the, out of the basis, right? Like out of the core. We, uh, you know, you can always write your own. This is a completely runtime mechanism. So if you don't like how my for loop or you know what what I thought was a good for loop is, write your own for loop. You know, you could have just written the map function and called it my four and run it, you know, if, if you don't like this. Um, that's really kind of part of, you know, this building block uh, um, mentality. You you have these simple reactive primitives and you have the components, you know, they're two parts of the puzzle. And, um, you know, I find that this experience makes it um, really nice for kind of creating your own behaviors. But what kind of components uh, for control flow do you get? I see that someone asked to show the filter component, right? There, yeah. there is one. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't have a, a filter one specifically. Like you can always just filter this list, right? I was just saying that. Like the, the difference between the last example is JSX art autom automatically um, takes care of you know wrapping the reactive wrappers for you, so you don't have to worry about. You know, we could just be like filter. I don't know. I got rid of my data. Um, so let's see, apple, orange, um, banana. You know, we can like go filter and t dot, um, whatever, t equals banana. 
mean, this can not be very interesting because it's never going to add anything. <laughs> but um, let's let's go T equals tangerines. You, you know what I mean? Like the the, the you basically uh, for that kind of stuff, we're just using JavaScript. But yes, the core ones that that I talk about is four like this. Um, there's show, which is what does uh, it do? It's basically like an if statement. So like show when list, right? Um, we already have the fallback for the for loop, so we don't necessarily need this here right now. But um, you know, show show when list, and it, it is basically again show. Solid actually auto imports these control flows, but when you use TypeScript, you have to import them yourself. Just a, a nice convenience that TypeScript adds to the the whole experience. But again, you know, um, um, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna remove my filter, but essentially, now if I remove this, the show should hijack it before the four does, right? So, like, so we basically have show, which is again, a conditional, it has a when, and then it shows the children, otherwise it's fallback. Um, we have switch match, which is kind of like a router kind of setup, mm -hmm. um, which lets you uh, like switch um, a whole bunch of conditions and then pick the first one that matches. Um, suspense, um, portals, dynamic, which is let you do, like there's a lot of them. Um, I, I'd say well, not a ton, there's about eight of them. Um, if, if ever in question, I actually have tutorials on polyjs.com about these, um, which kind of give um, good examples, right? What do we got? Show for index switch, dynamic portal, error boundary, and there's the suspense and stuff and suspense list and stuff around there too, but like... Uh, um, so you go through everything basically, all of those uh, control flow components. Right. That's nice. yeah. For example, here we have show, 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 show. You nest a bunch of shows. You're like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want to nest a bunch of shows. I'd rather just switch, match, match. You know, and basically, and using the fallback on the switch, you can basically create um, kind of if else changes using this. It's this is good for when you just want to kind of like throw together some simple like tab navigation routing kind of stuff. Um, basically, a lot of the, the the simple pieces are here made for you. Um, you know. I'll show one more off dynamic, um, which again starts probably as a switch match where you're kind of choosing which component you use based on the switch match. But you can also um, uh, just iterate over them as a, f um, sorry, you can also just use the options in a dynamic. And this will, this is doing a lookup where it basically looks up which component you need, you want to use and just renders it in place based on on uh, which one you pass as a component prop to the dynamic. So we, we have a few different patterns here for control flow. But yeah, if you if you look at most uh, frameworks that support stuff like dynamic, like Svelte component or view, I mean, this is kind of where we bridge the gap here is that um, for reactive libraries, you do need those helpers, right? Um, and it comes a bit with like running once, but um, it just it felt like components were already really powerful composition um, uh, tool to use here. Cool. Um, any other questions on on this on this topic? Uh, yeah, there was one question about the sync, but I think uh, you're going to talk about the uh, about it a bit later. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see if we have some time, time to get into async. I, I'm gonna mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna talk about stores here, which is 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 a little bit um, sort of related. So, um, yeah, as a Let's wrap up on components for control flow and look at state management solid. And um, the first thing that I'm going to bring up here is the context API. And um, let's see, I'm going to maybe use one of my ex previous examples here. Yeah, this is, a, this is a good one here. And I do this a little, I do this sometimes when I'm I'm in here just because I don't like wrestling with types when I'm in a live demo. Um, and, and this context always requires some some typing, as you can imagine, because um, and yeah, because you have to be able to pass this through your your whole your whole state. So let's make let's make a counter context, right? Um, so context works a lot like React. Um, I actually even use use context in a similar fashion. Um, it's 
it's just a good pattern for dependency injection. And it's one of the, re one of the reasons that I use this pattern is because reactivity um, works on like kind of like a tree and nested hierarchy. So it actually fits really, really well with it. So um, let's make a, what do I call it? Let's call it a uh, counter provider. This should look familiar to you if you, if you've used um, you use React context before, what we're going to do is we're going to we're just going to I'm just going to pop this whole thing up here. Like why not, right? And then return what was it? Counter provide counter provider value equals. Yeah, generally, I'm, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna make a store here. I'm gonna call it store just to make it a little easier because I like tuples. I I ever since I saw React Hook, I've been I've been I've been a pretty big fan of these. Um, you don't have to use tuples with Solid. I just I, I just have this this like of them. So whenever I whenever I get the opportunity, actually, full name probably is an internal. Detail looks with display name. Um, I just I just like separating my reads from my writes. Um, let's go. Let's go. We want to um, toggle um, toggle display name and grab. Some stuff here. Bear with me a second. As you can see, I'm just hoisting this stuff out into uh, into into um, <laughs> my buddy um, in, into a. Uh, I should just fix some of these errors right now, so it stops complaining at me. Um, mm. so this is under context uh, provider and counter context. Format that for a second, and we have one other function, right? Which is um, append last name. Let's call it append. Last name. And as you can imagine, this isn't going to be any different than React, right? We're just going to go like uh, const. For our purposes, we actually don't even need everything. We only need display name here, I think. And okay, so I'm I'm actually just gonna do this. Okay. So we're gonna go display name. Toggle display name and append. Last name. Equals um, what it use context. Um, I call it counter context. That's fine. It's not a counter. Um, and then this simply becomes toggle. Display name, and this simply becomes and last name, and then I'm going to go counter provider here. Sorry, I know this is a little bit long on the setup. 
but all right let's I'm going to quickly recap for those who have just uh, joined that we are looking at the demo of uh, SolidJS context and how is it dif dif different or similar to React. Sweet. So are we back in our... Yeah, okay. So I just hoisted everything, everything out into a co context provider and we're basically passing in the store now without passing it through props, right? We're setting up a, uh, our, our provider around our, our component. And it's it's basically setting up a bunch of reactive values. We're sticking them in in a in a store that we're providing to the provider and then wrapping the children. Um, and from there we have the ability to toggle first name, last name, like we did before, and append it. Um, the, the 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 really cool thing about using um, context with Solid and why I recommend it, besides the fact that it lets us handle disposal of subscriptions automatically because the thing with the reactive library is it's based off subscriptions you're always like firing events more or less so by putting it part of the tree all the disposal and everything is handled and, and scheduling is handled for you so it's, it's really beneficial but the the thing is unlike react i mean we already did the demo right you console logged all throughout the component tree there's there's no actual um need to worry about overhead or performance, right? Uh, um, basically, like one of the big things that comes up a lot is like, oh, you can just use reducer plus context and replace Redux. That's not true. Um, and you know, basically, the reason is you, you can do stuff to guard, but in general, look where the context provider is. It's, it's at the top of your tree, right? So, you know, it's wherever you inject it. So if you're not distributing it at a really, um, you know, like where it's being used, what's what's going to happen is you're telling the whole React tree to re-render to get you that value. Sure, you can memo components and do smart stuff there. But generally speaking, setting context is just setting state high up in the tree and causing the whole thing to re-render. Um, whereas in Solid, I already showed you that none of the components re-render. It's just, you know, pinpoint upgrades to, uh, or subscriptions to where they're used. Like, so in the same way, you know, this display name is the only thing that's updating. That 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 effect wrapping that insert is the only thing that's updating. Even though we're doing a bunch of this mechanics, it doesn't matter how you how you abstract this out. Um, that that is, you know, this is the only work being done. Um, you know, this completely scales from that perspective. Um, that's so cool. So it's like it's it's very similar to React context, but the subtle difference is that <laughs> the whole underlying mechanic is different, and it allows you to think much less about the optimization because it's like it, it's way safer in terms of wasting re-renders. They they just won't happen. That's it. You see, you see stuff like recoil, right? And people are like, oh, you know, like recoil. You get these atoms, and only those components update. Well, in, in Solid, it's it's not even the components; it's subcomponent level updates, and you don't have to do anything special. You just use the data, you know, that's provided for you, and you automatically get subcomponent updates. Um, you don't need recoil or anything, you know, fancy to do that. Um, that's fantastic. That's really awesome. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, uh, this this is this context mechanism is that. Um, let's see how are we doing. Yeah, uh, so context API. That's the that's the, that's the thing. Uh, the the you know the main workhorse here of how we get uh, you know global or shared state. Um, Solid also provides a store mechanism, um, which I'm I'm just going to keep on going with this example a little bit, um, and. Even though this example is really simplistic here, um, you know, in terms of just it only need the display name and only need a couple kind of toggle things. Um, I, we have a primitive called create store, and where its value really comes in is it allows us to use proxies, and this is something common um, in reactive libraries. You find it in MobX, you find it in Vue, and um, this can reduce the need to create like a billion si signals, right? Um, but I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to go set the state. I'm going to create a store here. And there's a, a few subtle differences. Stores in solid are immutable uh, by default. Um, there's a produce helper that works kind of like Immer, and there's a fully mutable store form that works like MobX or Vue. But in general, 
I'm, I, we've been trying to promote like, uh, you know, unidirectional flow and immutability. So, um, but we can, we can now, let's, 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 let's transform our example here to using stores. So now let's, what's nice about stores is you just get to just kind of um, just use plain objects. Um, and what was this one? Uh, I called it show full. It's true by default. And we have one more thing, don't we? We have display name. So let's let's do that. Get display name. I don't support setters, but I support getters because why not? Um, and I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to edit this a little bit. Um, um, right. And how okay. is this uh, SolidJS store different or similar to Svelte store? Is it the same concept? Like, is it similar? No, uh, see, different? Well, Svelte store is more like what we were just doing. If you if you just like made a signal somewhere, like if you just in, in a file went like create signal and imported it, that's a Svelte store. It's 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 just like mm. a, it, like I mean, they, they 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 they're set up the API more like RX, but you can just picture literally if you just opened a file and creates export default create signal. That that's a felt store. Um, there's really nothing to it. Um, I felt with Solid that we needed to do something a little bit more sophisticated because I mean anyone can just go create single like that, that's not that that's not providing that much value. Like that's part of our core primitives in Solid. Everything's the same. Like whether you're using a component or not on a component, so we don't need to like call out, you know, a simple like basically let in a svelte in a svelte component does simple updates and, s and then when you want to pull it outside of a template you have to use a store in solid the let can be used outside of the template you just don't need a different mechanism to do the same thing so uh for stores this is for more sophisticated cases because um the the and the reason this is important is that like like in, in this example we already showed it these pieces all update independently right like you, you could not listen to last name or only listen to first name and you don't want you know everything to 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 refire right you want independent updates so i wanted to make a mechanism such that um that it would be possible so that you know and so it would be possible so that users could more or less just write plain objects and get those fine grain updates automatically. Like each of these separate keys updates and subscribes separately. So you're not just you, unlike, you know, like a typical immutable store, you're not like going, okay, now that you set the whole value, everything that listens has to update. No, it's only the pieces you care about. Um, so th this, this lets you, you know, write stuff in a really kind of simple way, but actually still fully leverage uh, granularity. Um, so, yeah, so in our case now, we don't have all these specific setters. So we're not, now we have to do stuff like, how do we set full name? Well, we just go set state. Um, actually gonna, I'm gonna finally upgrade this one to this, but what were we doing? We're show full. You can use object form too, if you want. Um, but I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to use the recursive, like the function form setter. But basically, our our setters uh, support objects and merge objects like like a, like a React class components used to. But they also support nested paths. Um, so this this way, we don't lose the information about what has changed here. Um, last name, right? The, one of the biggest problems with immutable changes is you, you you basically have to update the whole thing and then diff it later to figure out what's changed. In this case, we we know what's changed, right? It's just full, uh, you know, last name or whatnot. So, um, you know, the, this should just you know be working. And then let's go here. Let's let's call this a store, and we kept this. And then the only difference I had to do here is now instead of display name as a function we should just be able to go store dot display name. Now, if I did everything perfectly right, this this will work. Of course, my chances of doing that are are on this demo today seem to be almost almost none. So um, let's, let's see if I got an error. Oh, of course. Dummy. It's it, I'm right before the 1.0 release. I, I moved create store into its own its own 
um, uh, get a sub module. There we go. Da -da -da. Toggle, toggle. Right. So there we go. So instead of having, you know, all that, uh, all that kind of logic before as a whole bunch of signals, we now were able to just create. Um, create a single store object with all our information and get that same level of granular updates um, through our context provider, just through, you know, exporting it and accessing it like normal variables. That's that's really impressive. By the way, Ryan, uh, will the code examples that you're showing right now be available after the stream somehow? Can you share the links maybe? Yeah, uh, I, I'm doing these on the fly, but the truth of the matter is all of these examples are actually in the tutorials. I just thought it would be... Ah. I, I thought it would be, uh, you know, beneficial to kind of work through it as we went. Although like, at times it's a bit lengthy. Awesome. Then I'm gonna just add the link to the tutorial so that people can practice and try them the try it for themselves. Yeah. Which I think it's always better to just like try it out. Yeah. Um, the, 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 <laughs> we've been fixing some bugs on the tutorials. I'm hoping that they're 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 in a good state for you to use. But uh, um, yeah, uh, in general, all the lessons are there, all the learnings are there. Uh, we've written 40 plus tutorials for all the mechanisms. Um, on the topic of state management, I just I'm going to actually use a tutorial for the next one because it just takes too much setup for me to show. I want to show you one thing because stores. I showed you how you can use context. I can show you how you can upgrade that to kind of make really easy nested components. But we can still use third-party state management, right? You know, I, I'm a big fan of X state, as people know, and and um, you know, and patterns like uh, a Redux and whatnot still apply here. You know, especially immutable data stores. The thing is, solids um, fine grain reactivity sometimes makes it less interesting to use with reactive libraries, simply from the fact that. We've already got those pieces built in, right? You, you know, things like recoil or Jotai, you know, maybe don't aren't necessary. Um, someone did make a uh, port of uh, Zustand, I think, I think for Solid, but um, generally speaking, uh, the the place where we kind of end up getting some extra added value is if you if it's 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 often easier with global stores to represent them in like large immutable data structures because you want to. Uh, um, have real control over the flow. And even though Solid's own state ensures that by being, you know, read only and by, you know, having these explicit setter kind of patterns, you know, Redux has great tooling. So like, let's leverage it, you know, X state's visualization tools, like wonderful ways to kind of keep track of what you're doing. And um, I wanted to kind of show this next example here because I, I did it, I just imported Redux, you know, um, and, and, you know, I wrote a simple Redux uh, wrapper. Now, to be fair, uh, you know, there there is some code here, so to speak. Um, so, you know, maybe I should publish it into a library at some point, but you can also see that it's actually not a lot of code. This is 22 lines to, for a use Redux hook. And the reason for that is that um, solid stores incidentally have, um, a reconcile or data diff function. And this lets you take immutable data and then pour out granular updates. So in the case of something that follows like uh, RxJS style subscriptions or something, you know, which Redux does, you know, any subscribable, um, it takes a little wiring, but I, basically we create our store from the store's initial state from Redux, if you're familiar with, and then we subscribe to the store. And basically we call set state with a modifier, I call it, which is reconcile. We also have one called produce, which lets you do stuff like immer. But what this does is a simple data diff. And this same pattern applies in, in um, X state as well. I made an example um, where you, when you get the next state, you simply diff just the data and then and and, the, and when you, through the setter function. And then all you have to do is set up the, the cleanup. So you unsubscribe from the store. And then all I needed to do besides that, which is more for my convenience, is I wanted to map the actions, so to speak. So you, you've probably seen this before. You know, This is a simple to-do example. We have the ability to add, and we have the ability to toggle a to-do, right? Um, and what, what you know, I basically mapped these action getters um, in here. And I, I realize I'm kind of quickly going through this. But the, the point is that in the end, it's our tuple again. We have a store, and we have our our actions. Um, 
that basically call dispatch in the background for your Redux store. And then, um, then you just kind of listen to it. And, and here's the thing, you know, I'm just using the actions in place like you'd expect. And then I'm iterating over each of the to-dos, store.todos and displaying them. And it might not be terribly obvious from this example, um, but I put a console log inside the for loop just to kind of prove that even though we're using um, Redux, so this is our store, sorry, just for your information. See, this is a typical Redux store where we're, we're, we have our to-dos, we're spreading them and adding the new to-do. When we're toggling them, we're doing a map and we're you know returning the new state. This is, this is straight Redux, right? But I, I, what I wanted to, to show is that through that reconcile function in our, that's kind of abstracted away in our hook here, or primitive, um, we, we essentially are doing the data diffing. I'm, I'm putting a console log right in this for loop to, in, to ensure this, because this should only run once per item that we add, because um, the diffing should be smart enough to know that when we add new items, not to recreate them. So when we add this to do, now we added the new one, but when I toggle this, it's not console logging because updating that nested completed value is, even though Redux is spreading and cloning it, Solid knows that it's only that pinpoint update of completed that needs to be updated. Again, it's just this style binding that is updating. It's not re-rendering the whole tree, it's just re-rendering this one style binding. Um, and that's that's with just your normal Redux store. So you can pull in something like XState or something like Redux and use it all immutable, essentially. And in the end, you still get pinpoint granular updates when you use Solid. <laughs> I don't know that's, if that's... That's, that's, that's just fantastic. I, I really like how you get this granularity not for free, because that's the whole point <laughs> of this framework, but but kind of, kind of. You don't yeah. get the screwed updates where the whole thing has to like be updated when one little part of it changes. Yeah, it, it, exactly. Like it's it's just like the, the the this whole mentality of of kind of building it up. And it, to be fair, um, this used to be slow, like knockout. If you go find benchmarks in 2014, 15 you know, even old Ember and stuff, you'll, this used to be a slow thing to do. Subscriptions are expensive to set up, you know, that's what you're thinking. But yeah. because the compiler, it solves that part. The compiler gives us all um, optimized creation paths. So we w this approach is always the fastest to update, but it was never the fastest to create. But the compiler bridges the gaps and, and allows us to have both the fastest creation time and the fastest update. And yeah, then boom, we have it now. Yeah. That's that's cool. Um. That's that's mainly what I wanted to cover in the in the session today in terms of our lessons. But I am I think it's a good time probably to kind of do some questions, um, Q and A, and kind of uh, you know answer. Yeah, but, um, I, I I can add the uh, like a banner the saying that we have a Q and A. Uh, right. Your questions, okay? Yeah, I can't see the questions because of the way the streaming setup is. Yeah, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna read them up. Yeah, I screwed up a little bit with the setup today. If I would create it through the StreamYard, you would see them. But unfortunately, the stream is created through YouTube, and it cannot hook uh, the comment section. So I'm going to read the questions now. Okay. Uh, please ask, dear folks. Would be cool to see a sync data. Like, wh how much time do we have? I think. Okay. Okay. How long would it take? Ryan, Let do you think we could cover it? it? It would take me a while to type this stuff. But if we want to just go over a couple of tutorials and I explain it, I, I think I can do this pretty quickly. Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's 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 go through the existing tutorials. Right, because what 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 I, basically the whole async section here is um, the the basic thing. In the same way it was introduced with React, was this idea that um, that we have uh, lazy components, right? And um, the, the 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 underlying mechanism isn't too important, but if in our typical app you just import, you know, greeting, but I'm gonna I'm gonna solve this with async. Okay, so lazy looks works just the same way it does in React. You just wrap 
the it and it expects the default import and you get greeting and then you just use it as a function and you pass the props in. Th this loaded so fast you didn't even see it happen um, uh, in this example, unfortunately. But you can you, this this is the most basic part of async. I, I don't think we need to dwell too much on this. Just know that you, there's no suspense boundary. I, I think it's very important to note that you can use the in the async stuff in solid without suspense. Um, it just suspense gives us a way of orchestrating it, but solid is just signals and it's all granular anyway. So we don't need suspense in order to, to use async stuff. We can use lazy components as it is, but like suspense is important for orchestrating things like server-side rendering. Um, so there's lazy and then there's resources and resources um, are this special kind of signal. And you might wonder why even bothering with this, but it lets us remove the coloration from our code. So instead of basically, uh, in, in, instead of uh, like having awaits and asyncs, you know, permeate through your code, we now just turn it into a signal. Again, this example doesn't have suspense. Um, our resources have a few states built into them, like loading, that'll be helpful here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve this one and essentially create resource takes in an input, usually a signal, something dynamic that updates, and then it's provided a fetcher, which takes- And what's in the tuple? Uh, yes, uh, the, the, the tuple returned is, the first one is just the resource, which is a signal. Um, and then the, 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 the other side are mutators you might need. It's not too common, but like if you need to refetch or like any kind of, like extra function type stuff, like uh, yeah, refetching is one, directly mutating the underlying cache is another. Um, I modeled this after SWR and React Query. It doesn't have the caching built in, so that's something for the you know community to build better patterns on. But the basic mechanism it has a very similar uh, API. So what we did here is the fetch takes the ID and you know this is just an async function that returns the JSON, and then the user it's driven by this user ID. Um, and so, you know, as we update the user ID, we it will automatically refetch with the new data and handle race conditions for you. And then we can even show the loading state if we want. And I'm just going to trace a string file. So here I here I am. I'm just going to fetch this. So this is this the the Star Wars API. You've probably seen it before. And you know, as we load, you can see the loading spinner come in. And you know, I, I went really fast. It, it, basically, it handles race conditions. Um, hmm. And I wish there's more of the show here, but really it's quite simple. You just you just have a driving signal and kind of like your cache key, even though it's not using cache, uh, generate your query, and then you have an async fetcher. The reason these two are separated um, is because for SSR, um, we can do really cool stuff like start fetching on the server and then stream the results into the resource on the client. Um, so I, I need them separate so that we can still track the reactive stuff on the client, yet basically sub out the promise so that we can basically, like, yeah, as I said, stream from the server into the client. Um, when we're is doing it demo somewhere? Like in, in, in this tutorial, is it somewhere? Uh, that the, the SSR isn't in this tutorial, um, but the Hacker News demo that I showed you does that. It's, that's, it's doing, using Ooh. streaming SSR um, on a Cloudflare worker, um, which is pretty cool feature. I know people are really excited for that when it comes out next year in React 18. Yeah, and uh, the, another question was about React 18 and uh, partial hydration. Um, so, does Solid have it? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, partial hydration is a tricky problem. Um, I'm not really, uh, we have prog what I call progressive hydration in that we capture the click events and the events that are happening on the page before the, the like main bundle loads and then replay them. Um, and Solid has some smart stuff where top level templates uh, don't need to get shipped to the browser. But for nested templates that are under stateful things, I don't have an equivalent for um, server components as of yet. Although admittedly, I don't think people should be focusing on partial hydration in the server component side. It does reduce size to be sure, mm. but <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, if, if you're in a single page app, you're routing from the, the top, like you, you're, you're almost always gonna have a nav and then and the, the, those parts solid can eliminate like the nav and up. But once you're navigating the page, you're swapping out that content. And sure, you can 
with server components, you could potentially re-render that on the server. Um, however, um, th there's, th there's basically, there's only, the interactive parts need to get shipped to the browser anyways, is the best way I can put it. And if, you, if, if you've seen Solid's um, uh, compiled output, like I showed earlier, we are only creating code for the reactive parts, right? Um, if, if, if I took this example and just went like, I don't know, like something stupid, like, like let, let's just let's just go, let's go. If hello, you can pretend this is some something that just doesn't need to be written, you know. Um, sorry. I kind of just to kind of show you what I mean. Um, look, 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 look at our component code. It, it, you were, uh, sorry, this, there's, there's, you know, we don't even need the signal. Look, look at our component code. We're just cloning something. And if you actually look at our hydration code, um, it it goes get next element, which means possibly use this template or not. So what, what what I'm trying to get at here is components that are static anyways, which are basically the things that are server components in React, don't really ship any code in Solid anyways, except for the template. So it, like, and you have to ship the template anyways for React. Yeah, exactly. if. So it, it's just lazy loading. It's it's not even like true partial hydration like you find in a multi-page app, like in you know, something like Marco um, is, is, is different. It literally never has to ship that code, right? Even to do server components React, you still have to ship that fifty kilobyte runtime. You know, like I, I, I think I think partial hydration is an area that's going to involve a lot of work and improvement in the future, and it's going to be a place where you're going to see like Im improvements. But like honestly, most like spa frameworks today, like I, I just wouldn't really concern yourself with the solutions. Really, are apples to oranges between like Marco, mm -hmm. Astro. Like if you've seen Astro, Astro is doing. Islands and partial hydration as well, but but like Next.js, you know, it, and you know, server components. These are not equivalent things. Um, they the benefit for them is you get to write an API in your component. You get to write this single experience. You don't need GraphQL. You can just you can just uh, you know write your APIs, do all the special per route formatting. The problem is in your typical client side app, you got to bring in Lodash and Moment and all this stuff to basically format your APIs because you're not going to write an API for each component you have. You, you write a yeah, general exactly. API and then you do all the formatting work. What server components do is let you go, oh no, I'm going to do that formatting work on the server. So it saves a lot in your, in your bundle and you know, I, I'm I'm definitely you know in our new starter that I'm coming up with, uh, been working on, going to have ways to do achieve similar things where basically we have you know built-in kind of API endpoints you know per component kind of like server component kind of setup. But generally speaking, um, it's just it's, it's it's not the same as Marco or Astro, which like never have to ship that JavaScript. Hmm. All right. So we have another a, a bunch of questions which I would summarize as uh, can we have a cancelable request mechanism like with the cancelable promises or something? Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I haven't actually played with it, but I mean, since the mechanism is just promises, you can cancel them. Um, I haven't. I, I don't know how that works in terms of like if they get rejected. I honestly haven't played with cancelable um, much, but it seems like a good feature to look into or to add because um, essentially. Uh, we have error boundaries. So like if, 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 if requests fail, what resources do, which is kind of smart, is they fail in the service layer, but then they, they catch that error and then they put in the resource. So if you read the resource somewhere in your view, it's actually the view that throws the error and then it gets caught by the error boundary. So um, like, I don't know if cancellation ends up falling into the same category, but mm -hmm. By using resources, we we know we basically detect everything where they're read, so we can kind of push the processing to like so you can display the right stuff in your view. Um, but otherwise, I would I, I would suspect this just has to come with like this is this is a very baseline API. It's very prim like very simple. It would it'd be building stuff around create create resource or you know special promise handling stuff. I just I, the, the create resource itself is literally just a um, signal that's aware that um, its data can be stale. So uh, it, it's just a matter of, you know, handling the pro promise of appropriately. Um, 
uh, I might need to I might need to look at um, how cancellation is handled, but I don't have a solution for that. Yeah. Today. But if anyone wants to yeah. come to our Discord and help, you know, l l you know, give me some ideas. I'm I'm definitely interested in working through it. Yeah, and I will add the link to your Discord in this video description. Please send it to me in private messages, uh, so I add it to the. the... Yeah. To the, to the description. And uh, let's answer the last question and before we wrap up. And it's about routing. Like, can you do m multiple pages applications? Uh, because I believe there was something about routing in the major, this major release. Yeah, uh, we, we did. Yeah, I, uh, not in the release itself, but I've been working a lot on routing. Um, I, mm -hmm. I started the work a while ago because I'm a big fan of Ember Router and nested routing. And um, Basically, there was a new release of uh, Solid App Router, which basically brought a lot of um, uh, how should I put it? Brought a lot of like React Router six features in. Um, we kind of do the same thing where we kind of marry both JSX routing and config based routing, uh, so you can do like file based routing and uh, JSX routing. To be fair, the routing solution like React Router, Svelte Router, pretty much every single page app router is still you know, um, you know, it's it's for single page app type designs. You can do static rendering, right? All single page app means is your application has a single entry point. Um, yeah, exactly. And then you can generate as many pages as you want, or you can serve them dynamically or statically or whatever. But that's that that's the fundamental difference between a single page app and a multi page app. When you have a multi page app, your application has multiple entries, and presumably, obviously, you can put a router on each of those pages or whatever if you wanted to. But I think. Um, uh, multi the, the beautiful thing about multi-page um, apps is they don't require um, a client-side router. You just it, it, you don't need a routing library. You use Express or Polka, you know, in Cloudflare or whatever. Like you know, or you know, sorry, Polka is like Express or the the new one from um, Luke Edwards. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but but essentially, you just you you just you just use server routing for a multi-page app, if, if that was the question. It, it's, it's you know, Veek um, can handle that in your dev setup, and then you, based on, you know, whatever you deploy it to, you just kind of handle that. Um, I, I think there's a lot of knowledge and area that we need to really kind of look at in terms of differentiating multi-page and single-page apps for people, because 90% of what we talk about now is single-page apps, even if it does stuff like static pre-rendering and stuff. And I think I think there's a lot of confusion here that I, I'm, I'm going to write some articles more about this in the future. Yeah, and you have some amazing articles. I love the one explaining the granular, like fine-grained reactivity patterns. That's fantastic. That really, really improves the understanding of like React and puts it into perspective. You start getting it like, OK, this is what they meant with the hooks. Yeah, I, I try my best to make these complicated topics simpler it's 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 interesting to see this stuff through through my eyes i suppose um because obviously i have like uh i have a kind of a, a different uh perspective on um how these things work but i i have found that if, if you learn some of these fundamentals um other frameworks will hopefully make more more, more sense for to you right you, you kind of get this higher level language to describe them because Instead of learning them from scratch every time you see every, every new framework, you're like, okay, this is this thing. It's in this framework, and that framework it's implemented a bit differently. And like, you you get like bigger blocks which you can use to build your knowledge. Which yeah, I, yeah, I think it's super awesome. Yeah, and and, and the, as I said, this came from a kind of a very honest place. I I was benchmarking. I I, I when I I started, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make knockout fast. So I just spent a lot a lot of time benchmarking, and then. To benchmark, the first thing you realize is most benchmarks are garbage, and they they've been written to tailor to a specific library or whatnot. Um, so you know, I, I went through a whole bunch from 2015 stuff from demos, and I I, I tried you know making the best version through them all, and I, I kind of learned a lot of stuff along the way, and then eventually you know I found the JS framework benchmark, um, which to my surprise, like Evan Yu, Rich Harris, like a big contributors, people like to their libraries have actually committed code to those benchmarks. Like, um, the, the, this is about as official as you're going to get for a, a, a benchmark. You know, we, you know, I actually wrote the React hooks implementation um, because I'm very familiar with that stuff. And, you know, I had Dan kind of chipped in and was like, no, yeah, the, do, do this pattern, you know? So we, we have input from the core maintainers on that benchmark. Mm. And uh, I just, I, I, I've, I've, at this point, I've, I've looked at, you know, 
dozens of frameworks because of that. I both like audited like all 80 at one point to see like how all of them work. And then, and then also like I've written implementations for about 12 or 13 of the, of the frameworks, um, kind of, as I said, working with maintainers and people who aren't as familiar with the benchmark um, to kind of uh, get the best performance of their libraries and kind of like understand the, the mechanics behind them. So uh, all of that experience is really tailored into how I've approached solid, um, just kind of understanding how most frameworks work at a fundamental level. And I hope I can kind of express that knowledge back to, 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 to you guys when you, you know, read my articles and whatnot. Yeah, awesome. And uh, to wrap it up, I would like to ask you to share a bunch of links, first of all, to this benchmark, to your articles, maybe a couple ones uh, to start with, if people are just getting to know who is Ryan Carniato, what is Solid, and maybe where should people start learning about Solid and how should they approach uh, beginning to work yeah. with it? We've been working on this website, and I hope, I, like, I hope it, it does a good job. We have documentation should now in English, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Italian, Spanish, French, and Portuguese, I believe are on the way. Um, so uh, we, we, you know, there's, there's docs, there's that uh, resource section. A lot of my articles are here. Um, um, not all of these are mine. Some of them are actually falsely credited to me, I think, but there's, there's, there's at least 50 some odd articles on solid here. Um, we've got some videos, libraries, um, the, the, the site actually has almost everything you need to get started. There's the tutorials, we have some examples, link to the playground I was using, um, even media resources if you wanna promote or you know make your own stuff for solid. Um, and yeah, benchmarks. Uh, I, I, can, I can get the specific links, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, get this, I'll get the specific links to the GS benchmark on our, on our, on our, um, and our, um, and our stuff, but um, yeah, I think just in case anyone hasn't seen this, um, I'm going to, this is sort of where where things are currently sitting um, on the JS framework benchmark. Just kind of give you an idea uh, of performance here, right? Um, th this is solid. This is hand optimized vanilla. This is Mikado. You can check it out. It's an interesting library. Um, legit fastest approach to rendering that I've seen. Um, has some trade-offs, but really cool. Um, this is solid with proxies. So you can see that um, using the store mechanism here is actually not much slower than just using solid naked. And then, you know, uh, there's felt, um, uh, view, um, where are we? React, Angular, basically every framework here is there, and you can kind of take a look. Um, let me copy that into the chat, and then uh, not sure if you will be able to send it to the YouTube chat, but you can just send it to me. Yeah, here. It's, it's and cool. then obviously, uh, sorry, where's our website here? Links to GitHub, Reddit, Discord, Twitter, like. Honestly, just go to solidjs.com and hopefully we have everything you need. Um, awesome. Yeah, people, go to solidjs.com <laughs> and learn it. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. That that was that was amazing. Uh, you, you, fantastic job. Thank you. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I, I love talking about this stuff when I get the chance, and I, I love the questions. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, have a great evening, morning, day. Nice week. Nice end of the summer. <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya.